We have explored and been able to map out less than 20% of our ocean. So little is known about it, and yet the ocean is becoming an increasing topic of discussion. From concerns about the climate crisis and the ocean pollution contribution, to the wondrous marine life living underwater, to the strange movements of the oceans themselves. Year in and year out, we find out a little more about our seas and oceans. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be looking at three ocean-themed announcements. Orca who grieved calf for 17 days gives birth again. In 2018, a grieving mother made the news after she carried her stillborn child for 17 days following his birth, though the more remarkable news here is that she is an orca. Taliqua carried her stillborn calf for 17 days through the Salish Sea, between three orca pods. Her story made the news, and whilst many of us felt sympathy for the mourning mother, her experiences proved something quite valuable. Humans are not the only animals with the grieving process. Wildlife photographer Alina Eberling Schuld was an avid follower of Taliqua's story. She said Taliqua in particular means a great deal to me. She continued on to describe the actions of the mother orca as a tour of grief that had a large impact upon a great deal of the public. She commented that this scenario demonstrates, quote, the complexity of animals' emotions, something humans are so quick to disregard. Others, however, were quick to criticize these conclusions being drawn from Taliqua's behavior, claiming this was an exaggerated anthropomorphism and that animals do not have the same emotional capacity as us humans. However, as of September 2020, Taliqua has become a mother once again, as the not-for-profit Center for Whale Research caught a glimpse of the baby, who is currently being referred to as J57, swimming alongside her. It has been estimated that the calf was born on Friday the 4th, September 2020, and was seen splashing around and having a whale of a time between the border of the US Washington state and the Canadian province of British Columbia. Some local whale watchers reported that on this date, Taliqua kept her distance from the other whales, which is fairly unusual. There are three whale pods in the Strait of Georgia. These whales are known as the southern residents and certainly have not had the easiest time. Between the fairly large population and the lack of food resources, the population has begun to noticeably suffer. The main source of food for them is Chinook salmon, though since this is an endangered species, the numbers of these salmon have been steadily dropping throughout the years. There has been a direct consequence for the whales that these salmon have been appearing less and less. A study published in the journal PLOS One in 2017 found that between 2008 and 2014, more than two-thirds of southern resident whale pregnancies failed to make it to term. Whilst the food availability is indeed a significant environmental stressor impacting late pregnancies, it does not appear that Taliqua's calf is out of the woods now that it has been born. The same researchers have found that despite this promising news of a birth, the nutritional shortages have resulted in a staggering approximate 40% mortality rate in young whale calves. It has the conservation group Sea Life Response, Rehabilitation and Research, or SR3, who first noticed Taliqua was pregnant only a matter of weeks before the calf was spotted. Dr. Holly Fernback has conducted research to monitor the southern residents by employing a drone camera to fly overhead, capturing aerial photos. These photos have revealed a number of whale pregnancies, conclusions made by comparing pictures of them over time. The progress for the southern residents regarding their potential new arrivals is fantastic. Hopefully the pods will begin to thrive once again, with Taliqua's baby leading a new generation. 99% of ocean plastic has gone missing. It's no secret that of the huge amounts of plastic we consume each day, a vast amount winds up in our oceans. Campaigns to reduce single-use plastic, such as the introduction of paper straws and the heartbreaking pictures of birds tangled in bags and other packaging, have been aiming to tackle this, though there is still an estimated 8 million tons of plastic entering the ocean annually. Whilst the messages to stop polluting the ocean have been clear for years, and we know that the waste entering the oceans is in abundance, scientists are confused as to where the plastic actually is in the oceans themselves. We can see the awful garbage patches and the litter along beaches, but the plastic we can see, observe and measure only accounts for about 1% of all ocean plastic. 
unnerving answers have begun to emerge as research has gone on. Eric van Sabiel, an oceanographer at Utrecht University in the Netherlands, used the analogy of an iceberg to explain what we think is happening. We see only the tip of the iceberg, meaning that the waste piling up on the surface is by no means the bulk of the plastic pollution. This actually accounts for less than half of 1% of waste, he says. The rest of the iceberg, or the other 99%, is under the surface levels. The maps of our oceans are not overly extensive and only observe the surface, barely looking past it. We do not have any way to currently confirm exactly how much plastic is in one part of the ocean at any one time. Research seems to indicate that the plastic is accumulating in much larger amounts in some of the deepest parts of the ocean, settling on the seafloor and becoming buried. Helga Nyman, a biogeochemist at the Royal Netherlands Institute for Sea Research, has suggested that part of the issue in detecting plastic in the oceans could be it breaking down into small fragments that are so minuscule they are difficult to observe and detect. Nyman stated that the plastic is more like a chemical dissolved in the water than floating in it. Monterey Bay is the land border to America's largest national marine sanctuary. At first glance to any visitors, the view seems picturesque with hardly any litter or problems, though this can quickly be debunked. Since 2017, scientists from the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute used customized remote control submersibles to collect samples of the fragments of plastic within the water by filtering seawater to take a photograph of what is in it. The lead researcher on the project, Anila Choi, a professor of oceanography at the University of California, San Diego, said, just because you don't see it, doesn't mean it isn't there. The results of this investigation found that there were nearly 15 bits of plastic in every litre of water, not far off the amount found online in garbage patches. While this method is promising, there is a great number of oceans left to explore and investigate, though it should help to prove that there is more ocean plastic at lower depths. For the marine life, this could have fatal issues. The nanoplastics, fragments smaller than a cell, Drifting through the ocean can build up in the tissue of animals, such as fish, leaving them with neurological and reproductive problems. This research should serve as a huge warning for individuals and corporations to actively think about their waste and choices that are being made to aim to reduce the harmful ocean plastics. Mysterious phenomenon could be making the Atlantic Ocean grow bigger every year. We might picture our world as much more static than it is, though we know Earth used to have Pangaea and is able to change. We do not consider our geography to be particularly fluid. The Atlantic Ocean, however, is growing by a few centimetres with each passing year. This slow movement of the oceans is due to the continuous movement of the tectonic plates. This is a result of the tectonic plates beneath North and South America pulling away from those underneath Asia and Europe. We do not know a great deal about precisely how this works, as geophysical forces can be difficult to understand and investigate. Despite this, we may have found one factor that could be contributing to the Atlantic Ocean's growth spurt. A 2021 study had scientists suggest that mid-ocean ridges, mountain-like formations found on the seafloor in between tectonic plates, could play a bigger role in transferring materials through the mantle of the Earth than was previously thought. Matthew Aegeus, a seismologist at the University of Southampton, UK, led the research in which he explained that before this study we knew sinking slabs or rising plumes were areas of transfer but had not considered that the same could be true for the mid-ocean ridges. Measurements now taken seem to suggest otherwise, however. 39 seismometers were placed along the bottom of the Atlantic in order to monitor the movement of the Earth underneath the elusive mid-Atlantic ridge. The readings from the seismometers traced the movement in the transition zone that separates the upper and lower mantle from one another. This has allowed for readings as far as 660 kilometers underground to be gathered. These deep underground results tell us about that material from the lower mantle and that it's rising upwards, closer to the surface. This range suggests that the convection within the mantle as a whole could be far more relevant in the growth of the Atlantic Ocean than we once thought. Whilst this science is highly complex and there is a great deal that we cannot yet research, we seem to be one step closer to understanding the strange ocean growth. 
The ocean is a confusing, unexplored place. Over the next few decades, we can only hope that technology catches up with the research we are looking to conduct. But what do you make of these ocean discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.